parking at Tom's Pond. The reason that's on the agenda is we were approached um, by a certain citizen about vehicles <coughs> parking too close to the water's edge and leaving ruts. So um, I don't know what council would like to do. We want to put up some signs or, um, I mean, ideally it'd be nice if we could provide parking on the uh, streets. And that's being looked into, but it's it's a big task, big undertaking. So, um, does council have any suggestions? Sandy, you you were the uh, the uh, citizen. Well, the concern was is that the ground is so wet; it's just entering ruts, and you know that won't come back when it dries out. The wood is there; you know, it's not going to pop back up when it dries out. Um, I also saw someone boating on the pond this week. That was fishing. Was it in a boat? Somebody who lives on that pond? I don't think so. They live on that pond. So we have signs up to say no boating. Who gave us the authority to say that? I, I'm just telling you what the sign says. I don't know. Who I put the sign there? I have no idea. I wasn't in charge. They don't own the lake no more. City owned it as public property and subject to public fishing. Well, the problem you have is launching a boat and riding down on the grass and holding it into the water and it out. It's the damage to the um, the uh, edge of the pond. We're not liability uh, for for boater uh, as a mishap on that water. Uh, other signs. Can it protect the city or uh, well for any kind of water hazard liabilities generally you assume the risk of using it unless there's something unusual or inherently dangerous about the water that someone would not be able to see. For example, if it's a wading area but in the middle there's a big slippery hole which you can't get out of um, or something like that. But normal bodies of water, if you go into it, you, you do that, you do so at your own risk. But it's your pond now, or at least you control a large portion of the boundary of the pond, and you can do, you can control the land that you own and however you can appropriate. But to put a boat in that water, not living on that pond, you're going to be really rotting out the, uh, the edge because you're putting your. Uh, you don't have the land. You don't have the land, that's right. So that, that addresses the same problem that we're talking about, destroying the, uh, the uh, pond's edge. So, um, I mean, I have a few stories in life that I can see the land around the pond damaged because you know, it's the whole point of what be beautiful and people's going to enjoy it. But people drive their cars right to the edge of the water. I ride my bike every day there. I mean, I don't know how they get out of there as wet as it's been, uh, as close as they are. Um, and you have the issue of the alligator. Um, well, I don't know how many there is, but there's an alligator right there. Yeah, and uh, that's just got all this happening. You've got water to get out. Oh, Tom, no longer there for like a catch him. He was 12 foot 6 inches. Yeah, so uh, I would. I would think they would want to appoint somebody, a committee or something, to come up with some ideas on how we can not control it, but to make it safe, you know, for people. Um, I, and maybe look at how much it would cost us to put some park in there. Uh, we don't need enough, just, you know, for 10 spaces or something like that. Maybe just to pay us a little area and say parking only here. In, uh, I don't, I'm just right. <clears throat> because they parked because they had nowhere else to park. That's true. You know they're going to come down there and want people to be able to enjoy the, the pond. And I was thinking if we just keep them back from the water's edge and, and just say you know no parking beyond this point. But I mean, just put some signs. I, I just don't know if the signs are the way to go. But if, you know if we're going to maintain the integrity of the pond, we have to do something. I'm not a big sign person because I think it takes away from the natural beauty, but so does ruts all, all up and down, you know, the pond. 
So you can have a pick your poison. The sons that are there now, I, I didn't know how they got here, but they're attractive. Um, they blend right in into the environment. I don't, I don't, have you noticed them? Did you see them? I noticed some of them, but not. not they don't like stand around right. or anything like that. They look nice. Um, they so we could just put some around them and park in the yard at this point, and then just have our, our police not give anybody a ticket, but just if they see somebody down by the woods, they just stop saying, you know, the sign is back up here. You can leave your car up there, and we just try to keep it you know, nice down to the water. We don't give anybody a ticket or anything like that. I think, uh, I think uh, Ms. Passion and I will go down to the uh, pond and take a look and see how far down, you know, cars can park and, and exactly where. You good with that, Jeff? Yes, sir. What about that driveway that runs along um, Burt's jail, your own jail over there, Burt? That driveway. <laughs> 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 it'll, it'll always be your own jail because of the stories you told me about it. But well, I got them from Tommy Sandler. <laughs> no, no, this one about the guy who got locked up on Friday. Oh, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. But um, who owns that driveway? Do we own that driveway? Because I think that's an entry point for a lot of people. Yeah, we own it. So could we block that drive to keep people from, because I mean, it's there and they drive right down that way to get to the water's edge. Uh, could we put like a, a, some cones up or something or a chain across there? But that might help with people going all the way down to the water. They also come in from the Main Street side. They do? Yeah, I see them. Where they don't come in is where it's a real down uh, turn off the railroad. There are parts where we're looking at it. It would be perfect for parking, but it would take a ton of, of work to shore that up with more dirt, and concrete, and just add. <coughs> I think it might be cost prohibitive. Um, I was looking at uh, parallel parking on the railroad to, to the edge, maybe 10 spots, but there's some concern about you know, doing that. So um, I'm going to go down with the uh, with Jeff, and we'll, we'll take a look and uh, see what we got. Well, why do we have that driveway there? Does anybody know? Why did we put that driveway there? Sure. It was put there by the maintenance department because for a while they were burning, burning trash there, uh, debris, debris, woods, and uh, trees, and stuff, and the big old blue dump truck we had to back in down there and just dump it between the jail and the war company years ago. <coughs> it was a long time ago. Mr. Mayor, what we're talking about the education, can someone call the railroad desk and come clean up the mess that they left over there when they replaced those cross ties in the big old pumps of the broken up ones. There's paint cans over there. I mean, it's, it looks awful from here all the way to the Sandlin house. It's terrible. I, I can't believe they left it looking like that. Have you seen it? Hey. Yeah, because I said it come clean it up. It's like they just left it. They picked up the big pieces and left all the rest of it there. Especially over there near the museum and the old bank. It looks terrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're a tough no, just um, either they clean it up or we're going to clean it up and send them a bill. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that they would want it like that. Okay, so um, we'll get back on the next uh, council meeting on the parking at Thomas Pond. Fencing proposal.